Hannah will spend $150 on music, festival tickets, reserve seat tickets cost $25, and general admission tickets cost $10. How can you re represent the situation with a linear equation? Well, let's just jot down on this. I want you to write up here examples, because we're going to do a couple of examples together. I'm going to read through the problem again, and just, we're going to write down the important information. Hannah will spend $150 on music festival tickets. That means the total equals $150. Reserve seats cost $25. Who's been to a concert? Any of you guys? Do you know what general admission means? You just get to enter and usually, especially at a music festival, it's standing. You get in, it's cheaper, and you stand. And that's when you see those long lines of people and they'll like try to be really close because they got a cheap ticket, but they're the ones up against the stage usually. Reserve tickets are for like the, all the people who want to sit. Right? People like me, the old people. Mm -hmm. We're tired of standing. We've done our time at concerts. Just play the music. I want to sit down and watch the show. Okay, so seats at this concert festival are $25. General admission, which is usually just referred to as GA, is $10. It's a good deal, right? We're going to say that seats are X and general admission is Y. I'm just making that up. We could do it either way. I tend to put whatever shows up first in the problem as X because we're going to be writing this in AX plus BY equals C form and the X is first, okay? So let's take the information we have and let's put it into the form. What's our total? 150. What's my A? 25 times X plus, right there, 10 times Y. Does that make sense to you in taking the word problem and turning it into the equation? What we did is we wrote down the information from the problem and we decided what was going to be really the C. Our total is going to be the C, right? General emissions is X, GA is Y. The number we got for those, this is our A and this is our B and we plug them into the equation in the right places. Now let's take what we know about solving problems or finding information from a standard form problem. How many total general admission tickets could she buy if she bought zero seats? What did you just do in your heads? Divided by 10, right? Or multiplied like 10 times what equals, right? Those are probably the two things you guys just did. What did I do? I said, what if we said that this was zero? So 25 times zero plus 10y equals 150. What's the other way I could set this up? I could find out how many total seats she could buy without any general admissions, couldn't I? So I'm going to say 25x plus 10 times what? Zero equals 150. Oh, I didn't finish this. We, we came down to y equals, how many did you guys say? 15. x equals 6. How does that look on a graph? That's why we have graph paper. This is my X. This is my Y. My X is what? Seats. And what's my Y? General admission.
I'm going to number my general admission going up by twos because my we know our total number is 15. the most she can buy is 15. I don't think I made my thing big enough to go up to 15 counting by ones, but I could go by two. Oops, I still made my graph a little bit short. <clears throat> So my 15 is actually going to be right about here at the base of my A. What the, that point is saying, if I buy zero seats, I can get 15 general admission tickets, yes? Mm -hmm. And if I put a point over here, that's saying if I buy zero general admission, I could buy a total of six seats, right? Here's why I love these equations for solving word problems with two things, two variables in them. See this point on the line right here? That same with my $150, or what was her name? Hannah. With Hannah's $150, she could buy two seats and 10 general admissions. You see the two down here? And think about what that means. Two seats would be $50, right? How much does that leave her? Can she buy 10 $10 tickets for that $100 left? So this is saying 2x and 10y, but they mean something in this. They're not just some random point that we've plotted on our graph. It means two seats and 10 general admission tickets. Is there another point on this graph? Does four and four make sense? That actually might be five. It might actually be right here. Yeah, four comma five. She could buy four seats and five general admission tickets. Oh well, yeah, because it's that one half basically. Right? It's because I graphed by two, four, six, eight that it's not popping right on there, right on that corner. But it makes sense, doesn't it? If she's got $150, she could spend $100 on seats and she would have $50 left to buy five $10 tickets. Does this make sense, you guys? Questions? So is this line like positive or negative? It's really a negative line because it's, it's, but it's in a way it's not. It's just showing what could happen with this money. She's going to spend it all according to this problem. It's really a how can she spend the money and can we graph what she can spend. And all along this line there's different points where she could spend all of the money and get a different set of tickets. Yeah? So if we're, if we're going to graph this, we're not going to put like an arrow at, at the end because uh, it, it doesn't go forever. Brilliant point. Did you guys hear what he's saying and, and understand? There's no arrow on this line. I have endpoints, don't I? Mm -hmm. My endpoint up here was if she spent all $150 on general admission, she would only get this many general admission tickets, right? 15. If she spent all of her $150 on seats, she would get six seats, period. Done with money. It doesn't flow on and on. And if you think about it, it makes sense because where, where would this flow to? Negative zone, wouldn't it? Mm -hmm. Where would this flow to on the other side of the Y? Yeah. Into negative numbers. And she's spending all of her money. She's not going to go into debt for it. <laughs> yeah. Right? She's got the money she has. That's what she's buying. So these lines have endpoints, and I really like that you brought that point up. Yeah. This is the cost of the tickets, period. They've rounded it. They've added their fees, et cetera. Oh my gosh. Okay, let's look at this question. And I gave you guys the graph paper, and you might want a second piece seeing how much room that took up. You might want more. Let's look at the first problem here. I gave you the graph paper because I don't feel like there's enough space here to do all the work. We could do what is x, what is y, etc. here. 
The admission fee at a small fair is $1.50 for children and $4 for adults. On a certain day, $5,050 is collected. Come up with an equation to describe this relationship. So, the total cost spent at the fair is $5,050. What kind of tickets do we have? We have children tickets and we have adult tickets. The children tickets are $1.50. How much are the adult ones? So what we're saying here is, let's make the children the X and the adults the Y. And in my equation, my $1.50 is going to be in place for what variable? It's going to be our A. And what's going to be our B? So my equation is 1.5x. Why 1.5? Do I need the zero? No. Plus 4y equals $5,050. We could graph this by finding our x and y intercepts. How? Enter 0 for x and then change it up and enter 0 for y. And just like this equation, that's going to tell us where our, our intercepts are, yes? This is asking a slightly different question. If 1,500 children attended the fair, how many adults attended the fair? Well, like I said, I don't feel like I have room here to do all of that work on the paper. So I'm going to move over to my graph paper. Here's number one. Let's first write the equation 1.5x plus 4y equals 5,050. And the question is asking if how many children? So let's rewrite this. If 1,500 kids came, how many adults came? Well, I did not have you guys grab a calculator, so I'll just use mine under the dot camera. What would I do to start solving this? 1.5 times 1,500. Do you guys see why I like these equations for these kinds of problems? Mm -hmm. Usually word problems are like, I don't even know where to start. These are really nice and clean. Like you can see what the total is. You can see I need X for one, Y for the other, right? So we get 2,250 plus 4Y equals 5,050. What are we saying in this equation so far? They spent, they, they, they took in at their gate $5,050. 2250 of that was just the kids. That's a lot. It is. It's not quite half the money, but pretty close, right? How are we going to find out how many adults? Well, we're going to subtract that from uh, both sides. And that's going to leave us 4y equals... Five zero five zero. I'm being really lazy. Minus two two five zero is twenty eight hundred. What do I do next? It is. That's where you can start to do this in your head now, right? Because twenty eight divided by four is seven. So twenty eight divided by four, twenty eight hundred, is going to be seven hundred. Wait. So. So the answer is 700 adults, oops, if I can spell right, and 1,500 children. What would that look like on a graph? Let's make a quick graph. Question, Liam. Um, can I have some graph paper? Yes. Where did I put it? I'm sorry. 
I thought we'd given everything there, but they knew she was absent. Here's one. Thanks. Mm -hmm. Okay. Let's think about this. We cannot graph by 2, 4, 6, 8 or something because we got some pretty big numbers here, don't we? Yeah. I first want to know what my x-intercept is. If I put in 0 for my y intercept or my y, I'm going to get 5050 divided by 1.5. It's not a perfect number, is it? No. But that means that if we have zero adults going, can you imagine a carnival with no adults? No. Oh, that, would be so that would be insane. But this is the children. And this is the adults. Hold on a sec. If I put a zero in for the adults, that means that there would be about 3,400 kids, right? So let's do this by 500, 1,000, 1,500. What's your question, Jeremiah? I did math, and you know how 700 adults are going and like 2,800 kids are going? Does that mean No, that it's 1,500 kids. Oh, 1500. That's how much they spent to go, but there's 1,500 kids with 700 adults. Uh, Did that change what you were going to comment on? Yeah, that means that like an adult has to bring two kids. It's about one adult to two kids, yeah. But you can imagine families going to, I mean, it might be one adult and one kid and other families have four kids and one adult. It just averaged to close to two kids per adult. Okay, before I put my numbers on this, because I know right now, looking at this, if I put a zero in for adults, we're gonna end up with right about here is where my line ends for children. Sorry, I didn't realize how tiny that was. Before I put the numbers up my adult column, I wanna know if I put a zero in for X, if there's no kids at this fair, how many um, adults would that be? So I'm going to do 5,050 divided by 4 is equal to 1,262 and a half. There's not a half an adult going. But we're kind of estimating. These are pretty big numbers we're dealing with, right? So where would 1,262 1, end up being on this? Well, should we also go up by 500s, do you think, or should we go up by like 300s? If I go 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, we could go up by 200. At least it fits on my graph. I don't need to go any higher than that because 1,262 adults means that the zero is going to be about here. I sort of estimated so my line is not going to be exactly perfect. But if I've got my 52 children, is that ending up at right about 700 adults there? Pretty close, isn't it? Okay. 